We were on the air live yesterday when the news came across the uh, the old Twitter machine. Uh, used to come across a wire. A wire. Beep, 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 beep. Um, but that um, uh, John Robinson, the general manager of the AFC South, leading and absolutely going to win AFC South, <laughs> uh, defending champion, number one seed from last year, Tennessee Titans. The general manager, John Robinson, got fired. And so much being said about it's got to be more than what was the obvious. That A.J. Brown used to be on the team. They let him walk. They traded him. Instead of letting him walk, they trade him and um, don't want to pay him. Eagles are like, we'll pay him. And their quarterback turns into an MVP favorite in the process. It helps. It's not the only reason why, but Jalen Hurts is Got a connection with A.J. Brown that I don't think we saw very much with Ryan Tannehill, but be that as it may, could have seen it, not seen it, and they get waxed in Philadelphia. Waxed. With A.J. Brown showing everybody what he used to do or can do and isn't doing, and also the Titans don't have that gear. So maybe it's as simple as that. And a lot of... You know, we thought about it since obviously it happened on this show. Uh, uh, I, it was discussed quite a bit in Tennessee and some of the coverage I saw. The conversation we had with Mike Vrabel mere weeks before last year's NFL draft, in which AJ Brown did get traded, confirming that the rumors had a lot of smoke and then the fire. But this was a few weeks before the trade when I asked him about the trade rumors. Is AJ Brown on the on the on the trade block? Mike Vrabel? Um, as long as I'm the head coach, I, I, I love AJ professionally, personally. Um, you know, I've been, I've, I've gotten him to, to know him well as his coach and uh, enjoy you know, seeing him as much as I possibly can. So as long as I'm the coach here, I would, I would want to have AJ Brown on my football team. Says the at the time reigning coach of the year and a guy who is doing a terrific job this year. Seven and five, the Titans are. And there's been smoke and there's been some mirrors and this guy can coach his ass off, as we know. So he was asked about the Robinson firing and brought up the A.J. Brown trade again today. He said that he had nothing to do with the firing. I mean, it's, you know, there's just a lot of chatter. You, you, you hear a lot of jibber-jabbering <laughs> about, well, you know, he's not happy with the situation with A.J. Brown, and he's not happy with yeah. the wide receivers. He's been talking about the wide receivers, and this is the guy who gro- shops for the groceries, so maybe, you know, Vrabel greased the skids at the very least. He said he didn't, didn't know anything about it. He was just told. John Robinson's out. This is what he had to say about the A.J. Brown when it was re- trade, when it was revisited with him yet again today. You said at the time that you were on board with the A.J. trade when it happened and that you and John had talked about it and shared a wall. Do you still feel that way about the A.J. trade? I, here, here's what I feel. I feel like, you know, to, to look back in the past and second guess, like, we're, guys, we, we made a decision and that we felt like was in the best interest. Um, of the football team and, you know, the decision and that we wanted to head at the time. And so, you know, AJ's in Philadelphia and we're moving forward. We're moving forward. Of course. You know what I mean? Like we all, you know, again, there, there's decisions. And then when you make decision decisions, you respect them and you make sure that, you know, again, we find ways to, to prepare the players to win and that we ultimately win and that we're doing our job and that we're held to a high standard. Just to clarify, Mike, then you were in the discussions to some extent at that time on the AJ trade? I'm pretty much, you know, in my history here, uh, have been aware, um, I would say, of almost everything that's, you know, happened on a personnel standpoint. There's been, you know, John and I, again, have a great relationship, had a great professional relationship. and that that's, you know, that's how things work. I'd like head coaches who are reigning coach of the year, coaches who are seven and five and going to win a division coaches who need a win for 1,000, Alex. That's a rarity right there. Seven and five, going to win the division, going to print the playoff ticket for the, for the home fans, going to happen. 
just hasn't happened yet. It will happen. Rest of the division, they are clear head and shoulders above the rest of the division. But you want to talk about the rare instance of that guy? Reigning coach of the year, currently 7-5, and going to win the division, still in really much need of a win. That's that guy right there. To, to cheer in the page, but look, they got, they that's gotta also get, they got to get right game two. They got Jacksonville this week. That's also a guy right there who certainly sounds like he's not going to shovel dirt on top of the general manager with whom it does appear he had a, a, a good relationship for the most part. Yeah, but on the AJ Brown trade, they definitely disagree. There's no way he's <laughs> yeah. sitting there yeah. saying, "What? What do you mean you can't <laughs> find a cap room? Let's go." We'll figure out something else. Yeah, give me somebody else. Like I'll, I'll coach up somebody who we need to get on the cheap. But we got to keep this guy. Come on. What do you think the head coach of the Tennessee Titans is going to be like? Yeah, just, just tell AJ Brown we we can't pay him. I'll figure it out. Don't worry. <laughs> Three weeks after saying, not as long as I'm the coach here. Yeah, no chance. I mean, you want he's the guy who says take your heart pills and buckle up. That's how AJ Brown plays football. I mean, he is the personification of the way Vrabel wants to play football. And it did not help that he ran over a defender. Ran over. Like full Rex Chapman blocker charge type collision. And the penalty was on the defender as he ran free. And just threw him and wide open for a touchdown. After he stepped out of bounds on the previous one. Basically had a touchdown, but his big toe was out of bounds. And then on a contested <laughs> throw, I wonder what the PFF or the, uh, you know, uh, next the gen. next gen stat was on the, the window of like the ball. It was like behind him with one hand right on the outside. Went yeah. past the defender, blanketed on him, and he, I think he pinned the ball against the defender and catching it with it one arm. It had to have been less than 10%. I mean, good Lord. The worst possible game. For Robinson and the tight. I, I think it's as simple as that, along with the rest of the decisions that have been made and roster decisions that have been made and and draft choices that haven't panned out. And then, you know, it's a quarterback-driven league. You're trying to chase Josh Allen. You're trying to chase Patrick Mahomes. You're trying to chase Joe Burrow now and Lamar Jackson and potentially Justin Herbert if he can get it together, if the Chargers can get it get around him. And... The place where you got Tannehill from, supposedly leaving them in such a lurch, they're set now with Tua and the coach that they currently have with a dynamic offense that the Titans certainly don't appear to have. I think that's as simple as what we got. Yeah, nailed it. Yeah. And the owner's sitting there, and she's thinking, I see it. Got to do it. Middle of the season. That's rare. Just six weeks from the playoffs. Say the least. Crazy. Where they're going to be, have a home playoff game. Home. Wow. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I mean, it's possible Ravens come there, Bengals come there, Dolphins come there. Yep. Oh, yep. Possible the Bills come there because they're probably going to be four. It's going to be five. Yep. Whoever's five is going to go to Tennessee. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku Channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 